Have you ever heard of the guano islands in Peru? They may not be pleasant, but they're well named. The islands are covered in bird guano, a lot of bird droppings. Peru is a desert. There are a few other places in the world where a rich, cold sea meets the warm land, but not many. There are places in this desert where it has not rained in 200 years. In coastal Peru, life depends on the sea. The desert is so inhospitable that the few people that visit come to see the seabirds. Most of the seabirds dive for a small fish called an anchovy. Yep, the one you eat on your pizza. Seabirds depend on the rich, cold Humboldt current that bays Peru's shores. Peru had the largest concentration of seabirds in the world. Once seabirds may have numbered close to 100 million, but now they're only 2 million. Seabirds, when they're standing around, resting and breeding on the islands, do a lot of pooping. A person lived on the islands to keep the birds sitting on the islands, depositing guano on the land and not into the sea. Guano deposits were hundreds of meters thick in places. Guano is so valuable, it was scraped down to the rock and used to nourish plants, gardens, and crops. Where there are fishers, there are fish. Peru fishes anchovy. Small boats bring in the anchovy and lots of other seafood. Much of it is sold at local small markets and the whole family is involved. There are octopi and there are octopus, crabs, and tunicates that need to be bagged for sale. All the family helps to get the seafood ready for sale and enjoys being at the market. These crabs would rather be in the water than sitting out to be sold. Scallops show off their bright orange gonads and protest being out of the water. Snails are smashed to take them out of their shells so that people can eat them. Many of the fish are small and the perfect size for seabirds and hungry humans. These are little markets, but there's a huge world market for Peru's anchovy and other fish. Fish are kept alive and fresh until they are sold or frozen. Frozen seafood is trucked to Lima and exported around the world. Most of the anchovy ends up not frozen, but rendered into fish meal and not used for people. This one plant grinds up one million of the four million metric tons of anchovy harvested each year. Steam spews into the air and white coats make sure the product is clean and is of high quality. The scale of the operation exploded my mind. What are we doing to our world? The anchovies come in on a nearly endless conveyor belt. Trays of dead fish, fish everywhere, and they just keep coming. Once the anchovy harvest was 12 to 18 million metric tons a year, so no wonder the seabird populations and the anchovy populations crashed after the 1972 El Nino. The seabirds have yet to recover. Recently, the government limited the anchovy harvest to 4 million metric tons a year and made the Guano Islands Peru's first marine national park. The 1 million metric tons of anchovy that become fish meal could be used a lot better. That's a lot of fish, a lot of fish meal, a lot of money for a few people, and an endless conveyor belt of fish. Most anchovy landed becomes fish meal to feed chickens, pigs, and farm-raised salmon. What a waste for people and seabirds. Fish are moved, sliced, diced, ground, and dried. The omega-3 oils are extracted to be ingested by people in hopes that we can extend our life, keep healthy, and think better. The product is remarkably clean. Anchovy has little bycatch, but using it to make fish meal is a loss for the environment, for seabirds, and for people. There's beauty in the dock in the fish meal plant where the fish are unloaded. The beauty disguises the damages humans are doing to the seabirds, the fish, and the environment. Sometimes there are holes in the pipe that slurry the fish from the platforms where the boats unload them to the plant. The slurry of water and dead fish bubble into the ocean instead of into the plant. White fish fat floats on the surface. One of the costs of an imperfect system 
and imperfect human beings is often a polluted environment. We can each make a positive contribution to sustainable seafood. Eat canned anchovy. Don't eat farm-raised salmon. Be mindful of what you eat and what the chicken ate that you eat. Be knowledgeable. Read Conservation Magazine and join the partnership. Become part of the environmental solution, not the problem. Your actions matter for the environment, the fish, and the seabirds. Reduce your ecological footprint and read Conservation Magazine. Subscribe at www.conservationmagazine.org.